cool. Okay, so welcome to my itty bitty pool. Last summer, the pool was a lot smaller and every three days or so, it would get full of stuff, like slimy. And I have to change it out all the time. And I got old, so this time around, I decided to learn what it took to keep a pool running. And uh, I'll get into this in a little bit, but the number one most important thing that I found out that I had to do was test strips. So, make sure this is on camera. Yep. One, two, buckle my shoe. And line it up. So, a little bit high, maybe. Chlorine's okay. Alkalinity, pH. All right, so, chlorine level. Uh, if you keep it at the right level of chlorine, then uh, stuff doesn't grow in there, algae doesn't grow in there, pool does not get slimy. That's probably the number one most important thing. The alkalinity over here does not refer to acidity alkalinity. It refers to like mineral content level. Um, and I have no clue what to do if it gets too low or too high. Um, but so far I haven't had to deal with that. pH does talk about, you know, acids and bases and stuff. And it's really like the number of free hydrogen ions that are running around in the water. And what happens is if you don't have an external source of like air coming in, then you start to run out of hydrogen and things start to drop. So in order to keep this up, all you gotta do is have some kind of air jumping in, which is what this little guy here is about. But anyway, that's, that's easy stuff. The other easy thing to talk about over here would be the actual chlorination thing. So what I found is, oh, here you are. This little guy. And in here, two tablets is almost too much. So it's almost like one and a half tablets. So um, get them on a cycle, I guess. But uh, it's, it's all right. Uh, one was too little. Two, maybe a little bit too much. Works out okay. I think you can also adjust this bit over here as to how fast it uh, disseminates. Third thing that was easy. This is a $5 uh, from the packing aisle at Home Depot for moving TVs. And what this does is uh, it lets the sunlight in, uh, heat the pool heats up, and then overnight, all that hot water does not evaporate as fast with that thing on, so the pool heats up faster. Another small thing is one of these guys, preferably with a stick, but the stick broke on this one. Oh, wow. I caught a huge bug. What kind of bug is this? <gasps> it's a shark bug. All right, so now on to the filter. I tried it without a filter at first and you could see like the murkiness kind of build up in the water. Um, dissolved insect wings, perhaps. Not too sure. Uh, so I got a pool filter and with the pool filter, this pool is too cheap to have the holes that go through the pool. Um, so I could just stick these ends straight in the pool, <coughs> but the water pressure is so much that it just, they just jet right out. So I looked online and I built this thing. Or to do this, I had to learn how to use these guys. And that was kind of fun. Uh, turns out they're can cancerous, so you should probably have, I should have probably worn gloves with them maybe. And I built it wrong. Um, this is supposed to be one inch PVC. I used one inch C PVC, which turns out to be a smaller diameter. So I don't know if you can see it in here, but see that there's like a little yellow thing in there. That's plumber silicone tape that I wrapped around several times so I could get the seal to work correctly. So how does this work? Well, important thing that I found out the hard way, the top of this 
has to be below your pool water level, which is almost not possible in this pool, uh, especially when I had it before where this is outside, this is in the garage, and it was on like a little concrete lip. And I just couldn't get it, it could, I couldn't get it to get all the air out. Um, but, so I moved it all out over here. So yeah, let's get into this thing here a little bit. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out the filter and you'll see, well, I don't know if this is gonna work or not, but let's try it. If I open this up, boom. And see how the water's flowing out? That's because that water level is below, it's below this, so it's all siphoning out. So in order for this to stop siphoning, so I could actually detach this and take this filter out to clean it, uh, I need to break the siphon. That's what I'm doing, gonna do here. Break that siphon, and break the siphon on this side as well. Okay, and now we've broken the siphon, and I can open this thing up, and the water stopped leaking out, and I can go clean this thing. Which, I already mostly cleaned it. Oh, there it goes. And just for kicks and liggles, we are going to totally open up the system and let all of this water out. And we're going to start from scratch. Who let the water out? I did, I did, I did. Go water. Input comes in the top. Outputs on the bottom. Let's get the system running again. All right, just by itself, turn it on. It, it doesn't have enough suction power to suck the water down. So, in order to get this running, I have this on open. Open up this valve at the top here. Open up this one. That's already open. And I've got to fill it up with water. wait for the distractions all right so I'm going to reload water into the system the way I had to do it the first time that you know no water in the system at all we'll start off with opening up all of these things but really this one over here I could keep closed so and then we start to fill this up with water and it's okay that water comes in here and goes out there you just have to fill it fast enough that the water also goes in there uh, and actually I do need to open this so that the water the air can push it out oh no I guess it'll just push it over as long as this is tall enough it should push all that out so let's go You see the water's coming up there. I'm waiting for the water to start coming out the top over here. There it is. Water's coming out the top there. I can close this off. And I can close this off. And now we have a siphon from there to there. Now I can turn it on. 
and that pushes the rest of the water up this way and just have a couple of ugly looking water things to maneuver around now if this was better I don't think I'd have those water bubbles but that's not a perfect seal so get that all up there and I think we can let some of the air out maybe about as good as this gets with the silly little joints that I have down there so if you're gonna build this thing you should build it using regular PVC one inch not CPVC because CPVC is the wrong size and that's pretty much it as far as this pool setup goes as all the components of a major size pool the one of the things it does not have is a skimmer which i guess is where the surface level of the water kind of goes in and goes and goes down in one of these holes and that way that gets all of this little crap off the top um let's see the other thing i don't have i don't think i have a diving board which i would not recommend on this small of a pool uh, we do have a nice, soft, squishy bottom for the little ones. And yeah, there it goes. So I hope this video was useful to you. I tried this, which is a electric leaf blower. And um, it did not really work, I'll show you. Very messy, but I don't think it actually gets the air to stay in the pool. Or, I don't know. I don't know. It was fun, but not a practical solution. So I had to.